Welcome to Moonstone Update. I'm Mark Beshard, the Managing Editor of Moonstone Publications. Here's a look at the stories we covered over the past week. The first Zondo Commission report detailed how SARS was captured during Tom Moyani's tenure as Commissioner. Judge Raymond Zondo says management consultancy Bain & Company was contracted in January 2015 to completely restructure SARS, despite the fact that it was already regarded as one of the top revenue collection agencies in the world. According to him, Bain's profound strategy refresh was simply a pretext for assuming control over SARS for ulterior purposes. Bain has apologized for its role in the damage inflicted on SARS, but claims it did not deliberately intend to do so. In his weekly column, Paul Kruger notes that Bain was welcomed back into Business Leadership SA after being shunned for three years over the state capture scandal. This raises the question whether major international companies implicated in state capture should form part of a business association's membership, while an investigation has yet to establish what they did or did not do. The Zondo Commission's report has also put a spotlight on the role of private sector companies in state capture. PricewaterhouseCoopers has admitted that it dropped the ball in failing to identify corruption at SAA when it audited the company's books between 2012 and 2016. Judge Zondo adds that if they and their audit partner in Conkey Incorporated had done their job properly, the problems at SAA could have been picked up sooner and addressed. Meanwhile, Nedbank says it committed no wrong in relation to the interest rate swap transactions it concluded with airports company South Africa between 2009 and 2011. The bank was responding to Judge Zondo's recommendation that the law enforcement agency should investigate Nedbank and its employees for their alleged role in a corrupt contract involving AXA and the Gupta-linked Regiment's Capital. The South African Institute of Chartered Accountants says it will investigate all members of the organization mentioned in the Zondo Commission's report. It has initiated an investigation into Yake Quinana, the former chairperson of SAA Technical and an ex-SAA board member. Thaika says it is finalizing the charge sheet against Quinana. Judge Zondo said Quinana failed to give any plausible explanation for why it was lawful for her in her position to have received payments from an entity that was a supplier to SAA Technical. The Constitutional Court has given Parliament 18 months to amend the Intestate Succession Act and the Maintenance of Surviving Spouses Act so that both laws provide for permanent life partners. The court had found that sections of both acts were unconstitutional and invalid because they excluded permanent life partners. The case was brought by Jane Wanya, who lodged claims against her deceased partner's estate on the basis that their partnership was akin to a marriage. The Supreme Court of Appeal has ordered the South African Post Office to pay contributions to the Post Office Retirement Fund. The Retirement Fund went to the Gauteng High Court in July 2020 after SAPO failed to pay employer and employee contributions of 40 million rand a month for May and June 2020. Arrear contributions have been mounting since then. The Supreme Court's judgment set out why the High Court erred in dismissing the fund's application. Justice and Correctional Services Minister Ronald Lamola says officials were working tirelessly to catch up on the backlog at the country's master's offices. Responding to a question from the DA, he said the master's offices were only able to resume processing inheritances from the 15th of November last year, when a new fingerprint verification server was restored. That's all we have for this week. You can read these stories and many more on our website, moonstone.co.za. Remember that you can earn CBD points by reading our articles and completing the short assessments based on them. Visit our website for more information. Until next time, here's wishing you all the best from the team at Moonstone Information Refinery.